How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm finally going to go and put this thing through its paces and give it a test, the uh, what's it called, Bore 45318, another one with a phone number. Um, yeah, so we'll see how it goes compared to the others. I've already done the uh, the Paystar and the P512. Engine wise, it's got the KZ GT engine which is a beast, it doesn't go up to S+, plus, but considering the size of the truck, it goes up to S, we'll, uh, I'm yeah pretty happy with that. Uh, suspension wise, I'm, oh sorry, not suspension, <laughs> gearbox, it's got high range which I'm definitely getting, I usually go for high range anyway, but I believe this is the only truck that combines the KZ GT and the high range, normally they have the special advanced special options. Uh, the suspension raised, it mainly lifts the front up really more than anything which it kind of needs it. As for wheels, I'm going for the chained, but if you look, the uh, not all terrain, the off-roads are kind of ranked as like average, excellent, good. The chained are ex uh, average, excellent, good, and then they just get excellent on ice as well. So to me, they're pretty much like, if there was muds, I'd consider it, but yeah, I'm going for the chained. Uh, the winch, sorry, I went for the advanced uh, heavy. Uh, the diff locks are engageable. The snorkel, I'm going to go for these. I'm, I'm not... I don't hate them, but I don't particularly like the look of them, but yeah, obviously you can go deeper, that's what she said. Um, as for add-ons on the back, it's a bit random that you can have that seismic vibrator module, I don't even think we need it anymore. I can only have a saddle high, so there's no saddle low trailers or anything like that. As for add-ons on the top, just parking lights and, oh, I put a different sun visor on or something. Front bumper wise, the actual bottom bit of it doesn't change, so it doesn't really matter, and in the end I went for this one, because it has like two extra rectangle LED lights on it really. Like, if I was going to pick looks-wise, I'd go for that one because it's sat flush, but yeah, like I said, that's got two extra lights. I don't know how much difference it really makes, but that's, uh, yeah, the one I went for in the end. Like I said, stuck some chrome parking lights, a few horns on. I may as well uh, skip most of that. I was originally using those uh, heat-shielded exhausts, but as you can see, they kind of stick out to the side. So if I go f for that one, I'll be able to look out the cab when I'm in, like, first-person view or whatever. Uh, yeah, it won't block my view when I look behind me, so that's why I went for that. It doesn't smoke that bad anyway. As for alloys, I went for those like red ones. Uh, I don't normally, and normally I go for like the chrome neater looking ones, but they just kind of, even all these sort of ones suit this truck better really. There's the ones I went for, yeah, like the red kind of five spoke ones. Um, Colour wise, there's a few decent paint schemes. I mean, that's the one I've mainly got on. It looks, uh, yeah, decent enough, that one. Yeah, it's alright. Quite like that one, but I've for the most part not used it because it's a bit like the uh, Pacific P16. The black one looks pretty nice and that green, it's that shade of green I'm not particularly keen on but yeah whatever it's uh, it's not too bad. So we'll take a look, it's definitely, I mean it's a big old beast and I think it's, it looks pretty cool. It's definitely got a big old uh, snout on it, you can kind of see that's going to be the main issue because there's quite a lot of truck all sat over that one that front axle. Inside looks nice enough. The mirror as well, I can actually see near enough the whole garage door, so the mirrors might be wide enough to be of some use, even to someone who's as blind as me. Um, yeah, that like window splitter thing sort of gets in the way of that one a bit, but it doesn't matter. When I stick my head out, there's no exhaust in the way. I can see my tyres, I've got decent view behind me. The horn, I mean, it's not terrible. I just expect a bit of a meatier one for a truck this size, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, so, fire it up, give it some revs, and uh, I believe it goes up to 2000 RPM, a little bit of a slow climber. Plenty of them are, that doesn't necessarily mean anything, there's some that are really punchy that appear to climb slow when you actually look at them, but yeah, that's the, uh, that's the situation, so we'll set off. I mean again, it's nice to have a, or at least to try the KZ GT with a high range gearbox. Trailer wise, it can have all the towable ones and like I said, the saddle high. The fact that they all sit really high kind of shows you how big and how high stuff sits on this truck. Even that trailer, quite often the wheels are slightly glitched through the floor when you look at it, but that one was sat above it. Um, yeah, so obviously they're the sort of trailers you can take. Uh, uh, the 8 slot, the big heavy wide 5 slot and that ramped, whatever it was, a heavy boy or something it calls it. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll set off pretty good pace to it because it is in the high range area of gearboxes which again I definitely like. I like that because it uh, allows you to just get on with it. I'll stick it in high generally going along here anyway. It's uh, because overall between the tyre sizes and the high range it's a nice speed in high. Um, coming along here you can see it, it kind of bouncing and kangarooing a little bit. It's very spongy on the front and it's always going to be the front that will give you the issues. I mean the back is pretty much covered just in axles and wheels. But um, yeah, like I said, that front, particularly with the sponginess, 
it was doing all right through here. I mean, it was a few little areas where it slowed down a bit, for the, but for the most part, it was it got through there in high, which I was pretty happy with. However, then climbing up here on the other side, it just decided to uh, die in high, and it had had enough. Which again doesn't really strike me as something the KZ GT engine would be doing too easily, but we'll get into that as we keep going. I mean, going up here, it because it is a little bit bouncy. It's like lifting the weight off your front wheel, so as you're steering, I feel like the steering isn't the most responsive to begin with anyway. It doesn't do well with like little minor corrections. You kind of need to feed the steering in long enough to where it suddenly goes, oh, you're steering, wham, and then you fly left or right. Nailed those trees. Apologies, little glitch there, but um, yeah, luckily just got all, killed all three trees without issue. I kind of expected it. This thing is a bit of a heavy, hefty beast, so it uh, should have. Didn't do too bad round there. It got stuck-ish near like the end of that but it made it further round that tree than I thought before it started uh, flinging mud everywhere and uh, yeah like I said I was just looking now you can see I mean the rear of the truck is one power but yeah that whole like the fuel tanks forward are just all supported by those two wheels and it's just in a way it's a lot almost too much weight really sat for just them to handle I don't really know I mean uh, the Apparently you can't really do double wheels on steerable axles. Well, you probably could, but apparently you're not allowed or whatever anyway in real life. I don't know, I would personally go, say for example, if you could put the custom muds on, just a wider tyre in general to at least help with the ground pressure situation and kind of spread some of the weight over the front. Motoring along here along the rocks, no issue, but there you can see, I was like, I was steering to the left, but between it being a bit of a delayed response to the steering and it not being particularly uh, sensitive to steering either. Yeah, it, just, it didn't even go in time and I just kind of bounced off the rocks. But yeah, considering the speed, I'm taking the odd one or two damage on the suspension, but pretty decent to be fair. Not anything to, uh, to worry about. Like, it's going to take a good old while before I smash it to pieces. But then you do get the odd random hits like that. It's a little bit like the nature of heavier things in this game. The fact there is such a lot of weight bouncing around, you can just take odd hits like that. I mean, again, I won't specifically blame this thing but that's just kind of the nature of the game anti-terrorist barricades slap that out of the way with that uh, didn't even flinch really took a bit of engine damage but then it caught it on the wheels and going through this section this first section is like guaranteed slow no matter what but overall i was actually like oh it's feeling night all right really i'm only in like all-wheel drive at the minute i hadn't even gone down into low range with the diffs um yeah it's not the quickest, but it certainly right now feels like it's doing it comfortably. It doesn't feel like, oh god, any second it's just going to struggle. I, I think it'll tick along through here all day long, particularly in low ranges. And uh, yeah, no issues. There's a strong current that I just went through. It, again, this thing's heavy enough that it didn't really affect it at all. And uh, yeah, back out of there. can get into high relatively quickly, which is nice. Ram them out of the way and we're off. Uh, next up, so we're on to, what's it called, Northport. Oh, there's me bait, Fleet Star. Just so every time I get an update, if that stays there, that's a good thing. <laughs> so I've got a few little things planted around. Going through the snow here was no issue. I purposely dropped it out of high there because I wanted to kind of make it drive over that barrier. I apologise for the little glitch there, but we're about to go over this next barrier. Again, like, with the glitch. I deleted a load of footage as well and freed up a load of space, but it's still doing it. I also noticed with that Wreckfest video I did, because I was recording that live and doing it a different way, those little glitches were kind of cutting my audio out as well, so... I don't know if I'll be doing too many more videos like that, I might just have to uh, do it the old-fashioned way, and eventually, if, if and when I get a PC, I could probably like record the footage that way. But anyway, um, as going over those rocks, I kind of cut that out some videos anyway, this thing would have tipped, pretty guaranteed. Climbed over these alright, it was bumping its front bumper on um, that barrier, so considering how tall this thing sits, the front bumper does sit pretty low. But when I scooted over a little bit, I mean, yeah, as far as climbing over the barrier, it had no issues. The tyres are big enough that they, yeah, manage that pretty well. And again, I think having the chained, um, as far as, like, gripping onto little ledges, that helps hook, hook you over and stuff. So uh, that went pretty well. Cutting along here, I mean, it didn't tip getting up here. Um, I just left it in auto because it was ticking along pretty nice, I have to say. This was not bad. This is definitely like a super snow section, I would say. And it's uh, made quite a few trucks go pretty slow, but yeah, there was no point in dropping into the low ranges because 
it was doing just fine in auto. This, I mean, it's a bit of a big truck to even try and climb up these rocks. What you're generally best doing is trying to, yeah, thread your wheels like either side of the rock. Because if you go too far to the left, you'll just tip off to the left. Go too far to the right, it'll start skidding you over to the right, which it nearly pretty much tries to do with me now. I stuck a winch out, but that was from the front, so it didn't really do a lot. Probably would have tipped there if I didn't fling that winch out. But it is what it is. I mean, it got down the bump, no issues. It's just, yeah, a big fat lumbering truck like this isn't ideal for climbing over, like, rock sections like that. I honestly thought, right now, not a damn chance. Not with the way the front bumper is and the big old schnoz this thing's got. Oh, some miracle it clipped it though. I was like, oh yes, that's actually uh, pretty respectful. The boxes couldn't believe it. They jumped for joy. And now we're going to go and try and go through the trees. I didn't have high hopes for this, just for the fact that the truck is so massive. That's what hinders things going through here, because it's the tree branches, the OP boss level tree branches that you're trying to fight your way through. But I suppose in all, this kind of demonstrated it for me as well a bit. The... Uh, this particular test I do is almost like a grip test because the branches are trying to block me now but I'm fighting against them. I will say I've got a winch from the rear of the truck to that tree so I'm not ramming my way through there unaided like that. I couldn't get through unless I used the winch basically. Which like I said it's a massive truck. I've got those two big snorkels on the front so I wondered at this point I wonder if they were catching on the branches so I went back this thing did actually manage to jump it two for two so yeah, that wasn't just a fluke the first time. And I think I cut a bit of it out because, long story short, I couldn't get through the branches either. I had to do the same trick, winch from the back to the tree and pull myself through. Uh, while I'm heading through the cargo test, I just put it at night, uh, showing you all those lights on the front bumper and everything. It's yeah, pretty decent. Definitely see where you're going. So, for the, uh, the cargo test, I've gone and got this. I have to have high saddle trailers, so I've got this wide... Uh, flatbed thing. It was either this or the 8 slot. I was quite happy to bring the 8 slot, but you can barely turn around in the garage anyway, so it's not a very good uh, test for like your turning circle. This thing, I have to say, was actually a very respectable turning circle there. But for the size of it and everything, probably about in line with all the other trucks, but obviously they're all a bit smaller, so yeah, this pretty pretty good. Can't, uh, can't knock it for that. And hauling along here, it's having no issue. This, uh, this trailer certainly sort of suits it size-wise. Uh, they're quite a good pairing. I believe this trailer has got more weight to it than the others, though. Some of the saddle low trailers would be nice, I'm not going to lie. But yeah, for the most part, we're ticking along just fine. This video, by the way, was it just under 45 minutes? I was trying to get it down to 40, but you'll see what later on. I mean, it's, it is what it is. Uh, I had a choice between either just cutting segments out entirely, or and then it defeats the purpose of making a review in the first place, so... I tried to get it as short as I can, but yeah, got to work with what I got. <laughs> uh, driving through here, it tapped out pretty quick as soon as it got to there. I was in high though, so a lot of them are going to wheel spin anyway at that point, but dropped it down into the low range diffs on. Really not feeling too comfortable now though, you can see a lot of wheel spin going on. I was already thinking, oh no, it's it might be done. But I was jiggling the steering left and right, we caught a bit of grip there, thankfully. And it starts inching forward, again apologies for that little glitch, but the root, that little root sticking through that's currently phasing through the rear tyres didn't actually, it was like it phased through the front tyre as well so I'm not really going to complain because I'm 100% certain that never even used to be there until about 30, 40 reviews in and uh, yeah, after that little section, low range diffs on it did actually tick along out there pretty nicely, pretty respectably little turn in circle here so no major issues of going wide on that corner so yeah, all in all, like, I'm not going to say amazing, but, you know, decent, good enough. Uh, I'll stick it in high now. It's it stayed in high for now, which is good, but I can tell from the revs and just the feel of it, it's not wound up fully into high, so it, it's at a point where it'll throw in the towel a little bit easier, which it does in a few seconds. But the fact that it even stayed in high that long is pretty good, because especially that this trailer weighs more than... A lot of those are just the normal five-slot semi-trailer sideboard thing. Cutting through here, I mean, it was look like... I did two attempts going through there because I kept clipping the rocks on the way past onto, like, the fuel tank. Um, yeah, motored along there, no issues. Turning circle again, I turned... I Well, I feel like I turned on in time, but because the steering is a bit slow, 
it was basically, yeah, I steered a bit late there, but it still made the corner without doing any three-point turn or anything. I knew getting through here, it was going to have to, it's certainly too wide to just drive through there, but bumped its wheel up on that side. I mean, part of the issue is those fuel tanks and that on each side, they can catch quite a lot of things, so, which is effectively happening now. I don't like the sound of how much the revs just keep dying on it, though. You can hear it now, it barely sounds like it's on tick over. I mean, I can always winch them trees in front of me, but I was trying to give it its... Give it a bit of time, let it do what it's going to do. And eventually it uh, fought its way through by itself, so... I mean, it is, it is what it is, it's a big fat wide truck. Got caught on that tree carcass. They can be a little bit trollish, so I won't specifically hold it against it, but... I thought, for the most part, it's got fairly decent ground clearance, but yeah, it could have just been on an awkward angle. I mean, yeah, like I say, it's a big wide truck, so it's, it is what it is. Squeezing through narrow gaps is uh, not going to be an area it uh, excels in. I, just, I wasn't quite happy with how quick I jumped into the interior view. Doing like a little test of uh, when I'm in the truck just to see what the view over the bonnet is like. To be fair, I can already tell it's pretty good. I feel like I'm sat pretty high. The steering wheel's barely in the bottom of the view. They're not high enough to be blocking my windscreen. The bonnet also kind of slopes off at a bit of an angle. I'm sort of, I use that tree, the little one in front, as the reference point, and for the most part, I could see most of the tree all the way up. It also has got this little bottom left corner that generally is clear all the way to the bottom of the windscreen. But yeah, when I'm looking around, I mean, I can see out the back, I can see out the side, my mirrors are all good. Looking out this way, I can see what my wheels are doing, and a trailer if I had one. Uh, I'm also able to stick it in high along here, so yeah, all in all, I mean, sort of passed all them tests as usual. Not too many things struggle down there. There's a few though. I'm sure the dairy probably did. <laughs> what didn't the dairy struggle on? Yeah, even when we blip in the throttle there, it still allowed me to stay in high, which you blip the throttle at your own risk when you're in high. It's uh, It can easily just lose its momentum and uh, tap out. I knew it would catch its bumper going down here. It didn't just catch it, but I can't even drive forward, so I'm just going to reverse a tad and line it up a little bit better. You can kind of see that blue ice bit sticking out, so... I can only centre it so much. Yeah, once I did though, it uh, it was enough to get up there. Like I said, the front bumper and engine and everything in general just sits a fair little way in front of the wheels, and then it's kind of got a little middle chassis plate, almost like the uh, the Colob. Going through there, it stayed in high through the mud. It wasn't like full high speed, but it didn't slow me down enough to just throw in the towel in high. Again, a little bit iffy getting through there, but... Low range diffs on and we made it. So uh, next up is this rock bridge, which because of the bounciness of it, I didn't have a good feeling anyway. And when I came in here, I thought, right, we'll go in high. That's what I usually try. The other, I couldn't even turn in time and it was just sort of understeering and yeah, I went off. So stuck it in reverse, was able to get back up onto it, which is uh, nice. So we'll give it another go. I was going to say what the hell's going on now. I was just changing it, <laughs> changing the time of day. And uh, yeah, smashes its like that middle bit of the uh, sort of engine. Uh, so I calmed down a bit with high range for now because it's just too mental for high range. It's going to catch itself. When I got to about here, I think I did try and stick it yet in high. Steering way too slow to react though, so soon had to abandon that one. I mean, overall, it can get over here. I know I could drive more sensibly over here, but part of it being the review. I usually hurl myself over there in high range with a lot of trucks which, whether they got better clearance, better responsive steering, whatever like, yeah. I mean this didn't do too amazing over there to be honest it's in the lower end of the the trucks on that one. It's not that it can't get over there, but just with the uh, delayed steering and the fact that it's quite springy and bouncy, don't exactly work with it so much. Going in the snow, I mean it's still in high which is nice, but it's fights its way through pretty slow for the most part. Eventually I can kind of find these little patches that allow you to uh, get up a bit of speed. Once we're through that main part, I mean bits are slowing me down again, but yeah, say about average through here. I mean it's definitely not a bad show, it's still clawing along better than uh, a fair amount, but some trucks can just purely sail along there in the high pretty much. Normally I go through that archway to the right of me but it was hitting and doing this, so I came over to this one. 
it wasn't happy about it, but I thought, well, I'll give it a go. Worst case, it'll just delete the vehicle and I'll recover it. But yeah, we did manage to get under in the end. Again, though, that could easily end in disaster. I mean, it's not the end of the world, just I suppose it's a demonstration of how tall the truck is, but while I'm here, this is part of the review that I do. Um, cutting over here, the big issue is the front sticks out quite a lot, so it's big schnoz is uh, buried in the snow and it's kind of got to shove that out of the way it did in the end. You can see that big muddy patch, that's where it really had to kind of plough quite a lot out of the way. But it did actually get through there in the end. So uh, next up is the mud test. The devil's mud section. And long story short, I really didn't have high hopes for this. I've generally found since I've been using this truck anyway, it feels like it's got a lot of wheel spin going on and not a whole lot of grip. I've used other tyres as well besides just the chain. I've used every uh, except the top one, but I did try all the different tyres. I just, it feels slippy. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, I do remember though, they said about a physics update a little while ago. I'm not sure if that's, like, the gearboxes definitely feel different recently. But yeah, I'm not sure if they've broke the gearboxes somehow, or maybe it is part of their physics update. Um, yeah, it wasn't liking it. I could scoot along the edge okay, but as soon as I started going into, like, the deeper, normal run I go for, it's just, there's too much front of the truck for just those two wheels to be uh, dealing with so it got caught basically even the rear wheels they just yeah not enough there to be able to keep shoving it through the mud so I winched myself to the edge it drove through the edge slowly but it did all right I mean I could cross there as long as I stick to the edge uh, going up here I will say I had again not particularly high hopes for this because I mean look at it it's a big fat massive truck with kind of bouncy suspension so definitely wouldn't be my first choice to be sending up into the mountains but we'll see how it goes and I believe I left it in this is not good for the start not many things have rolled there only the uh, ANK MK38 and the Royal oh, there might have been a few others oh yeah there was one what was it the, the Voron D might have rolled there but not too many although uh, I actually just did the trick of quitting the game and reloading just because I wanted to... I'd seen it had saved just before, so... When I went the second time, I actually made it up here, so yeah, I'm not going to put it, say, as bad for rolling in the category of, like, the ANK and the Royal. Maybe I just got a bit of an unlucky line and the wheel dipped a bit low. As for the nose test here, I gave it, like, the easiest option anyway and kept it as shallow as I could because, as you can see, even then it still caught it and I just had to kind of keep flooring it and scraping it through. And it kind of gets another little nose test going here. I mean, compared to some trucks that near enough sit flush with the front wheels, this one's definitely got a, uh, a pretty decent overhang to it, a bit more like Bruce or Dan. But for the rolling test, all things considered, it went alright. With some of the smaller trucks when I roll down here, I end up rolling like one and a quarter or one and a half times. Because this is a bigger truck in general, it kind of got down that slope to this more stable section in one roll so I mean to its credit but yeah it landed on its wheels I didn't actually need any help then which was uh, I won't say won't say no to it keeps taking those random hits of engine damage there's obviously like not much protection going on with the underplate oh so I apologize I didn't even realize it glitched there it tipped it tipped on me but it rolled a full 360 and got back to its wheels so again that was I don't know if I can really say that it's good at getting back to its wheels. I think just if I've rolled and it's got enough momentum to get up onto its roof, for the most part it then has enough to carry it back over and it'll get to its wheels. Um, I tipped there though so I had to send in the Tager. That made the jump, it always makes that little jump. And uh, I did have a little bit more Tager footage but like I said as the video ended up being a bit longer, sort of had to go back through and cut few little bits and bobs out. Uh, yeah, so the Tager flipped it back. No real issues, to be honest. It wasn't particularly difficult to flip. I could have brought the loaf, to be honest. Even in through all my review video, I tend to just bring a Tager with the custom muds to these, uh, these snowy hills. Going up here, I'll be honest, I was like, well, I've, I think everything I've ever tried has got up here, but I was a little bit unsure with this one because again like I said with the whole grip situation and the fact that this does weigh a lot I had to try and scoot over to the left because it'll never get up that first bit and yeah 
it tipped on me, but again, I believe it does it now. Made it to its wheel. See, it wanted to go again, but fortunately that tree was there and I flung a winch out. So it gave me another go. And what I'm going to do for this one, instead of going like to the right, round them trees again and try and scoot over to the left, I'll just approach from this way so I can go straight up the hill again. Apologise, there was a little glitch there. I really, I, well, I don't know how to stop them. It seems deleting a load of freeing up some space helps a little bit, but I just can't stop them from happening. It's beyond my control. It's very, very close to tipping there. It was not comfortable at climbing up there. There was a few times where it near enough lost all its grip, and I just had to keep it pinned, and it'd find a little bit more. But yeah, not, not good. And then I'm amazed it even got as high as it did there. But yeah, it finally went. I could have cut this out, but I thought we'll leave it in. Big fat truck rolling down the hill, and uh, yeah, that tree managed to wedge perfectly between like the wheel and the chassis. I did get it out eventually, but um, again, uh, this truck's uh, forte is certainly not roaming around in those hills, so I didn't want to leave too much of that footage in. Cutting through here, I've brought a ramped flatbed for this. See, most trucks just sail through there. They might have a little bounce as they hit that bump, but that actually didn't remain in high, which is uh, not the best thing. Yeah, I had I can't have saddle low trailers. The only other thing I could have brought is the 8th slot, which I don't want in the quarry, or that big wide 5 slot thing, but that's heavier than a lot of the other trailers. I know with from the trailers that are left in the quarry now, I generally use either the sideboard semi-trailer or the ramped flatbed, so that's why I ended up bringing that in the end. Even though I don't like the trailer, just to kind of keep it fair between uh, all the different reviews, they've got the same weighted and characteristics of trailer. I'm cutting through there, it soon had to drop to low range of the diffs on, but nothing special. Pretty much all of them do, to be honest. But again, you can see just always a lot of wheel spin going on. So there is kind of a lot of effort being wasted in just, yeah, lack of grip. Release the loaf, flying down here. I mean, it made it down here, but again, between the delayed steering and the bounciness, it's... Yeah, I was trying to make sure to steer to the right more than anything. I'd rather crash into the cliff than go flying off the edge. <laughs> Again there, I was turning, but it was just delayed, so not a lot I could do. So, for the old uh, quarry test, as you can see, I have been here before. <laughs> God knows he keeps leaving these trailers everywhere. I knew the nose would get stuck in there. I mean, it did manage to keep going and get its way out. But yeah, this is definitely a prime candidate for doing that. Drop it in the high now though, and it is actually bouncing along pretty merrily, but it is maintaining its speed and everything, so uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Not all vehicles were able to just carry on through there. Stick these slabs on though, it soon felt them. I even kind of do it now where I'm still just moving and bang them on as I move, yeah, it wasn't too happy about that. I mean, you can see sort of now already, low range of the diffs on. It's still... It just doesn't feed the wheels as well as... Like, for one, the KZ GT is a renowned, very strong engine in this game. I uh, got to that, I just sent my horse up as like a mobile winch point, but, well, you're about to see this thing needs Jesus, let alone a <laughs> mobile winch point. So, setting off, it can't even get up onto the hill unless I go into low range with the diffs on. But yeah, there's just. The KZ GT is a beastly engine. It's in the Colobs, it's in the Dan, and it's in Bruce, all renowned, strong, powerful trucks. And I just don't get why it's so limp in this truck, really. I mean, look at it. The uh, the middle rear axle is completely give up. The front is always in a perpetual state of half twitching and all sorts. That seems to be the way of this truck anyway. The rears are spinning a bit, but they've practically got no grip on them. So I'm uh, plenty of editing here, because this took me like 20 bloody minutes. But sent the, uh, the horse to the top. The... Uh, what do you call it? The boar couldn't reach the loaf, but the loaf could reach the uh, the boar, because it's got superior length, of course, that's what she said. He's hung like a horse, after all. Um, yeah, so I had to kind of create my own little loaf hole, pull the boar to actually just get the boar itself over the lip of that hill. Pulled it as far as I could, now back into the boar, trying to give it a go, winch into the loaf. Which does help a bit, there's not really a proper loaf hole up there, but just the actual help from the loaf. So he's stronger than he looks. Um, yeah, got me a little bit higher. 
And again, this was a long, <laughs> a long trial and error process. Uh, long story short, I was kind of tugging the nose over to the left, got the loaf at the top, hooked it on kind of that little rock ledge a little bit, which was able to yank this uh, ramped flatbed kind of over the lip of that hill. At which point, it's finally able to reach this lamppost. Like I said, only about 15, 20 minutes to get up there. One of the worst trucks, I've got to be honest. Uh, the only one I can still think off the top of my head that did worse is the Derry, which, thanks to the loaf, I was able to get the Derry up to the first uh, section, but then it just kept rolling, and yeah, in the end I gave up. It was like, you don't actually deserve to get up that hill. If I sat there for long enough, I probably could have. Well, I definitely could have, especially with a goddamn professional, but it was just like, yeah. The, the video was supposed to be the truck <laughs> getting up there, not the loaf getting everything up there as it normally does, which, to be honest, in this case, it basically failed both those hills, so I certainly didn't have high hopes of it doing anything great on this hill. It was struggling enough, to be honest, just to drive from where it was to here. I've already sent the loaf up. He knows what's going on. Um, yeah, I was, I was kind of impressed that it even got to there, but at that point... You hear the revs, though, they're just completely gone. I mean, obviously, I've got to go into low ranges to get the diff locks. And this thing definitely has the best chance in diff locks. I could have got the off-road engine, but I don't think it would make too much difference anyway. It wouldn't let me attach to the loaf, but again, because the loaf has got superior length, uh, I could reach the bore from up here, which I still had to move a little bit out of my loaf hole. But I was able to winch this just close enough. It took a few attempts, but I was able to now throw a winch. Because every time I'm not in this, obviously it puts it back in auto, takes all-wheel drive off... Uh, diff locks off. Sometimes it was taking all wheel drive off as well. Um, yeah, so the loaf was pulling it. You can see, because the loaf wasn't even properly in his little loaf hole, it tipped him, but I got him sorted and uh, we gave it another go, which got me... Well, up to this point, that's still not enough to where I could reach those trees up there. Which is what I would like to be able to do. And again, I was just thinking, well, I could just leave it here, but... I think the loaf's got every other thing up here, so I kind of wanted to at least give it a go. So I've not even used this little trick for a while, but yeah, wedge between these trees. Again, I couldn't reach the trees or the loaf, but I can reach the bore from the loaf. And, uh, I mean, the loaf's a goddamn genius. In the end, the bore ran out of fuel, so I went and grabbed a uh, one of these trailers, but then I realised that, aha, if I hook myself in these trees, that kind of extends me a little further back. Had a quick go with the loaf, but didn't particularly need to. Switch to the bore though, however, and as you'll see, when I switch to it, it instantly tries to plummet me back down the hill. It's turned diff locks and all wheel drive off, and the engine I don't even think was running at that, but oh yeah, probably because it stalled and everything. But I was able to fling a winch out and grab the trailer, and because the trailer is attached to the horse, and the horse is wedged between the trees, it had no choice but to hang on for dear life. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, it's a goddamn horse or a vehicle. If it wasn't for that little thing there, I honestly don't know if I would have got up here because. Since I've messed with the winch powers as well, like the loaf was hooked on them trees, it was ridiculously slowly pulling this up the hill, but I don't know if it would have got over the brow. I'm not sure, again, like I say, but it just so happened to say run out of fuel. I went and got fuel and had that idea and we made it. But yeah, long story short, this thing, hell no. You ain't, uh, any missions where you got to climb some steep hills, just take something else because this thing just cannot handle it. And I mean, given for the size of this thing, I know the ramped flatbed can be a bit awkward and everything, and the concrete slabs are certainly not light, but still. That's a pretty poor effort. The Bruce, for example, exact same engine, walked up there like it was nothing. Going down here gets springy and floppy. Again, I apologise, it, but that's all it did was just flip to the side, so send in the loaf. Funny thing is, is uh, I mean, look, I'm not even hooked on anything, didn't even get a little loaf hole, just pure horsepower. Well, now it decides to do some kind of drive mode. I mean, what a goddamn horse. He did it. Flip the bore and we're off. All I wanted to do was <laughs> jump off here. And I had no doubts it was going to, yeah, absolutely dig its nose in, and it did it again. Did a big endo. And it tipped. But to be honest, I just recovered them. I was like, there's no point. Uh, the loaf would easily... It's a bit anticlimactic, in a way, how easy it is to flip this thing, to be honest. When the loaf just did it back there, I was like, oh, 
but we'll get to more of that later. Um, yeah, long story short, ice test, drove it in the ice, stuck immediately. Drove the twins there in to smack it out. It's a pretty heavy, beefy thing, so I didn't really do a hell of a lot. But I got it back out of the ice, cutting across here. I don't know if I kind of got lucky. I mean, long story short, the front wheels are instantly going to punch through because it's just all that truck weight sat on those two wheels. It appeared to catch like its nose on the ice back there, so it made it through all right, but when going through again, yeah. Just absolutely no chance. Breaks through straight away. It's slowly crawling forward, but it just couldn't do it. I think by now, even if I got to the other side, the front bumper of it would just kind of butt up against the non-breakable ice and I'd be stuck there anyway. So, I mean, yeah, I, had, I didn't stay there long because it just isn't made for crossing ice. Uh, this is in, what's it called, flooded foothills crossing the river here. It just ended up being my kind of main route over here because I didn't build that bridge for quite a while. And to be fair, I actually did better over here than I thought. I thought, for some reason, I just had a feeling it'd be terrible. And uh, even though it's a little bit slower or whatever, I haven't even had to go down to low range with the diffs on yet. I mean, I suppose the wheels are, what, they're 58-inch wheels, so pretty decent. Getting up there for, like, some of the bigger sets in the game. I suppose they were enough to be able to climb over any rocks that were under the water. But then, look, you get out the other side, I cut here, but look how slow when it gets to that mud. And, I mean, this is just... Not really been in many other review videos, but as I'm going around here, I'm turning for ages there, just understeering, slow delayed reaction, and we're off. <laughs> just while I was there, anyway. So, back to uh, White Valley, going down the motorway, <laughs> the motorway, the airport. Um, like I said, at least because this thing has got the high range gearbox, it's got a pretty decent top speed to it, which I like. Tried to do the old Jeff special. I think it could, but by the time you get the speed, it's, I don't know, you barely get the advantage of it, it takes so long to wind up. I hit someone at the top, did some big fat like John Cena suplex going off. It would have been nice to be able to land on something at the bottom. Squidge like a little Don 71 or something. And uh, yeah, it did actually land on its wheels, but we're going to attempt again, bring ourselves a horse. Yeet. Bit of an odd bounce, the loaf of course. Professional as always, he lands on his wheels. Feels like, well. We'll see, this is certainly one of the bigger trucks in the game, so... Yeah, I was definitely thinking, well, it surely is going to be one of the one of the more challenging ones. I mean, we have flip collobs and P16s and all the rest of it, but still. I was just bumping over those rocks to uh, try and get a little a little bit of grip on them if I need it. I apologize, I ran out of uh, editing. I can only edit 50 clips, otherwise I'd have to save the whole video. It'd take like another hour and a half just to even get to this point. Um, yeah. Well, as you can see, it took longer to choose the winch point than flip the bloody thing. The loaf's just too strong for his own good. So, drowning test. And uh, good news is, I mean, it's got some pretty tall snorkels, and this thing is pretty tall in its own right, so it should be able to go pretty deep. That's what she said. It's going pretty well so far. Well, the good news by now, I already knew then they're not fake glitched winches, because which truck was it? I think it was it the P512. I think that had glitched snorkels. They weren't. They yeah, just weren't doing anything. Uh, yeah, so this thing went in pretty far. To be fair, before it started taking any damage. Sorry for the camera angles. I, I think it was me. Uh, aviation fuel. One of them was kind of making the camera go funny. It reverses out there with no major issues or anything. It's certainly got enough power to. It felt a little bit weak driving in there. So uh, I was going for a crossing test. I mean, as you do, it's only so long before I can. Uh, resist playing with the loaf. See how I hooked his wheels, like a little wearing him like a shower cap or something. He's on there, good. Kind of hooked his wheels over the uh, sun visor. Got his wheels over the back, and he's hanging on for dear life without a winch. Or the need to pack. Do you know what? I didn't even check at this point if I could pack it. I doubt it though, probably with the like fog lights and the exhaust and that in the way. Um, yeah, stuck a trailer on because this is what I wanted to try. Long story short, I drove over here with just a bore and it drowned. Yeah, so I came back. Stuck a loaf on the roof, because as I said before, if you want to go anywhere, just take yourself a loaf, and you'll figure it out. While I was down there, I just happened to have a, uh, a repair trailer that I would flew off at some point earlier. So I brought that with me, because this thing, even though it was drowning, it sits pretty tall, and it wasn't far off drowning. So I was able to try something that I've wanted to try. I've tried bringing repair trailers before, but once you stall and die, you can fix yourself with a repair trailer, but then I can't restart the truck. 
I fixed the engine this time though, and yeah, I was able to refire the engine. Because those snorkels are still pretty close to the surface, it didn't just automatically say no. And uh, again, there's a lot of, well, not a major amount of editing, but I cut a fair chunk out. I believe I'd done another repair with the trailer as well, and then this may have been the last one. Disconnect the trailer. It's dead weight at this point. That damage is going pretty quick, but... Obviously, I have got some repairs on the, uh, the loaf as well. And yeah, the engine's popping and spluttering, and it's a done. Which is about the same place, give or take, that I got with just the, uh, the bore on its own. But like I said, get yourself a professional. The magic of the loaf, he knows what to do. It's zombie winching time. Just to let you know, by the way, every time I kept switching to the loaf, after a while, the ball would automatically put its handbrake on. So, I fire up the loaf, stick a winch on, plug him in, drop the hammer, and I believe at this point, the ball has no engine health at this point. Like, there's no point in repairing it either, otherwise it will just keep dying now, but zombie winch mode works, so we started crawling forward. Uh, that's probably where I edited it out, like, a big chunk of it. Basically, that's where I realised like, I had to keep switching back to the bore and turning the handbrake back off, and then going back to the loaf, zombie winching it. And then, uh, yeah, we're off. And as you can see, that's all I needed. Just get those little uh, snorkels out the water. That's why there's a little victory horn there. I mean, again, look at the way he's hanging on to that sun visor. What a beast. I now knew at this point I could fix the bore... Uh, I must have already fixed it by now, but because I was zombie winching to it, sorry, I don't think it does take damage when you're zombie winching. But yeah, I needed to, before I could switch to the bore, I needed those snorkels just out of the water, which the, uh, the zombie winch was able to do. So then I could switch to the bore. The engine has 300 health, so it took the loaf's 300 repair points in one hit. Like I said, it'd be nice if I could dish them out a little bit, because I would have gave the engine 250. And just give the gearbox a little bit so it's not in the red. Because when you severely damage the engine in summer, it kind of takes the gearbox with it. As you can see now, I mean, I'm basically out of the water. But this boar is uh, struggling even just to climb out the rest of the way. Which is not the most impressive thing, if I'm honest. Nonetheless, though, thanks to the loaf, we actually made it through water to the other side. You see, there's nothing you can't do with a goddamn horse of a vehicle. That's why everybody needs to get themselves a loaf. So, yeah, I should have winched, yeah, to the back anyway. I kind of unhooked him from his little... I mean, look at him, though. <laughs> He's wedged in like a good one. Um, yeah, I actually wanted to know if this thing would be able to climb up this hill or not, because I've been up here in this exact same circumstance quite a few times. Again, apologies for that glitch, but it doesn't really miss anything that we uh, can't see going on. Yeah, this thing, it just... The lack of engine power when it comes to particularly going uphill, it's just all the wheels give up and I really don't like it with that. And I don't think that's a fair representation of the KZ GT engine or the high range gearbox. Whether they just don't go well together or what, I don't know. Or if it's more to do with like, since they've kind of broken, tweaked a few things recently, but it just wasn't of it. Basically, as I rolled back down the hill... I drove the loaf off the front of the ball, I drove it to the top because I was going to use it as a winch point, but then as I was coming back up, it's these rocks mainly in the way, and as I rolled back down, I knocked a few of them down with me, so I think I cleared a few out of the way. And then this was able to drive up on its own, just by the skin of its teeth, but it did actually manage it. So yeah, fair play one way or another. Again, of course, we had to use the loaf for help, but we got over to this island. A little victory jump off here for no apparent reason. <laughs> and that's about it, we'll take it back to the garage. Um, yeah, so in conclusion, I mean, I kind of want to like it. I do think overall it's the worst of the three new trucks we've got. Like I said, everything you can see in the picture now is basically all being supported by those two wheels, and they're just too small, too narrow, and overall the thing's a little bit too gutless to be clawing through everything. I think this thing should be at, just have an abundance of power. Um, yeah, possibly the physics update, but it feels a little bit wheel spinny, and just overall it's like... Long story short, is there anything this can do that everything else can't do, a lot of which do it better? 
Yeah, as for money as well, is it 233 grand fully upgraded, which makes it, I believe, the most expensive thing in the game. It's 181 grand stock, which the Derry is expensive, the 4520, and that's only like 193 fully upgraded. The little description there, sadly, the description sort of says, oh, it's unrivaled as far as power goes, and it's like, mm, I don't really find that to be the case, if I'm honest. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like that, or if there's just something going wrong between the gearboxes or the physics update or whatever, but yeah, it just... If it had a lot of abundance of power or whatever, it'd help, but I just don't see really where it fits. It's not as good as the other two trucks. The P512PF is pretty fun and better. The uh, Paystar's definitely more useful. Got the longer uh, sideboard and all that, so yeah, that's about it. I mean, give it a go, but... Overall, kind of sitting somewhere about average, maybe just above on a few things. But anyway, that's about it for today, though. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon members, and I'll be back soon.